Shalom, shalom. Karibuni sana to today's broadcast. My name is John Mwangi. Happy New Week. <clears throat> I would like to insist and encourage you to like, follow, and subscribe to our Slice of Today social media platforms. That is Slice of Today in Facebook, YouTube, Telegram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Uh, slice underscore off today in Instagram at the end of this broadcast. There is always an invite. You can inbox my brother to be added to Slice of Today WhatsApp group. You can download Slice of Today app from Google Play Store and or subscribe to Slice of Today WordPress post. As long as it's today, you shall be getting content. Now, it is always a pleasure and a privilege to bring God's words to you. Ensure you are tuning in anytime you see a poster. Uh, will be coming straight to your living room, to your phone, to your uh, anywhere that you went us from. Let's pray and hear God's word. In Jesus' mighty name, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We don't take this opportunity for granted. We receive your word with faith. We receive your word with thanksgiving. Thank you because your word shall find room in our hearts. We are open to be corrected, rebuked, encouraged, and even built up in the most holy faith. We make this prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Those of us in social media, at the beginning of a post, long post alert, so that you can be not be discouraged. Now, this episode series that I am beginning today is going to be a long one. It will I'll either do four or five parts. Today is introduction 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 the bible says mark 4 10 to 20 and he when he was alone those around him with the 12 asked him about the parable now this is the first parable that jesus gave and i need to insist that it is the first parable now the first miracle that Jesus performed was uh, changing, changing water into wine at the Cana of Galilee. Uh, it was a wedding which was invited. He was invited together with his disciples. So he never great crashed, etc., etc. Here the Bible says, Yakwamba, Badai, when he was alone, those around him with the twelve. So it was not only the twelve who got the interpretation of the parable. So Jesus says, and he said to them, <coughs> To you has been given the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for those outside, everything is in parables. Now, I once heard a teacher say, a teacher of the word, I loved what he said. There are things which are in the Bible recorded, for instance, most especially in the Gospels. So there are parables. So the truth of the matter is they are hidden. They have a hidden meaning. They are not for everyone. And then he said this, Akasema ya kwamba what chochote abacho yesu alifunza na ikuwa kwa fumbo, it was not a parable. It means it should be understood by everyone. For instance, the mystery about tithing, sowing and reaping, etc., etc., some principles, they were not parables. So it means that everyone is supposed to understand it and everyone is supposed to walk in the reality of it like it is not so with parables parables are hidden for those who are in the kingdom if you're not in the kingdom it won't work for you so here the bible says so that they may indeed see but not perceive and they may indeed hear but not understand lest they should turn and be forgiven so since to kielewa uh, parables there is a seeing that we see there is an understanding that we perceive and there is a forgiveness that comes because we were once walking in darkness but now we are walking in light verses 13 and he said to them do you not understand this parable how then will you understand all the parables so number one this is the first parable that he has ever given number two anawawiliza musipoelewa hi anawajulisha musipoelewa hi so it is very instrumental, very important for them to understand this first parable. So he continues to say, the sower sows the word. And those are, and these are the ones along the path. I need to mention this even before we take it any further. You need to know this is the first parable. Number two, if you don't understand this parable, you won't understand any other parable. Number three. 
you need to know on the four different grounds that the seed fell on. I've ever mentioned ya kwamba, the farmer scattered kwashamba. Everywhere it fell on was the field. He was not throwing these seeds from his house. He was not throwing these seeds from his car. He was not throwing these seeds from anywhere else, the market. But he was in his farm. So the first fell on the path. I need to repeat that this path was in the farm, was in the garden. Praise be to God. So you need to know how they fell. And I'll, I'll mention why. You need to know how they fell, where they fell, in what order they fell. So number one, and I said, the source of the seeds, number four, verses 15. And these are the ones along the path, where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and take his, takes, it out, out, takes away the word that is sown in them. Remember, I've done a series, some years back, about... There is no problem with the seed. So any seed, any word you're not interested in, you need to understand. It needs to sink down in your heart. Yakwamba, the devil is interested in it. Number two, Shetani alikudia mbegu ambayo haikueleweka. So this is, any time you go to church, any time you open your Bible, and you read, you are in a, in a devotion, you are in a... Bible study, you're discussing something and you do not understand. <laughs> so, this comes in very many ways. There are ungodly and demonic uh, 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 tiredness that comes upon people when they come to church. And I will explain with an example. So, kuna watu ambao, they were, maybe even they rested early the previous night or where they are coming from for the service. So that they can concentrate during the service. But during the service, especially during the word, here in Utaona ya Kwamba, when they were praying, they were very vigorous. When they were worshipping, they were very vigorous. They danced unto the Lord. Like in Ilipofika Wakati wa Neno, something just attacks them. They feel so tired. I need to mention, that tiredness is not from the praise or the prayers. Utasikia ama Utaona mtu amechoka. Alafu anaza kusinzia. Gyo ujue, hii ni ya shetani, anaposinzia, anapolala, anapochikwa na patwa na uchovu, baada ya ibada, they are back and they are energetic. They can even walk for 10 kilometers. They feel strong. Wanasikia, ala, si, si, ibada yanze saa, I, I, I think, I, I can now concentrate. Now that's when you know <laughs> it was from the devil. Because afterwards, now, so you, so it means that the opposite is true. So, they struggle to hear the word, and immediately after the service, they want to go and just rest. So, that means that they were genuinely tired. So, their minds is taken, it's drifted, it's, it's, it's hijacked. You can even remember a debt you were supposed to collect two weeks back. You are like, my God. Unakuta mtu kwa notebook anandika pa kwa kona. Anasema, call mwangi. Anaanza kujuuliza, nilizima gas. Ni kama siku sima. Ununa jamame toka inja kuigie virani, hindi angalie kwa yumba kama halizima. You remember weird things. You remember... Wakati ulikuwa nataka kukumbuka, huko unaweza kukumbuka. Lakini wakati waneno. So that you do not understand. So that is the seed that the devil is actually interested in. So that's the first ground that the seed fell on. 16. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. The ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no root in themselves, but endure for a while. Then when the tribulation or persecution arise on account of the word, immediately they fall away. So the tribulation and persecution comes to attack the word. It does not come to attack their, maybe if I can use this example, their health, their finances, their marriage, their family, their job. Lakini, lile neno ambalo lilipandwa. So number one, they receive it with joy. Unakuta uyo mtu, they are coming. They are on their feet. 
they are very engaged. Lakini, they do not relate with the word. You will allow me to use that example. So I was using this example, I was saying, for instance, when the preacher is preaching about promotion that will come, myself, I'm not employed per now, as at now. So somebody who is employed, and we both say amen, so myself, I might not quite uh, relate to that prophetic word. Lakini yuna mbae, amekua akiyobe, amekua kifunga, amekua kifanya kazi kwa kampuni fulani, miaka fulani, alafu, this promotion has not quite been coming. So when they say amen, it has root because they know that this is that which concerns me. So there is a dimension, there is a particular way in which they will capture this prophetic word. Lakini it is not so with anyone who does not have root. So root means that kuna mahali haijaingia. That is a person whom they are very energetic, very active. Lakini bada ibado kimuliza tunubiriwa nini, umesikia nini. They will tell you number one, it was very powerful. Number two, I was mightily blessed. Number three, it was powerful. Number four, it was very powerful. I'll come back again. Number five. I will encourage everyone who was not here to come here. Number six, it was powerful. But they cannot quite relate what that power it actually is. So, Shetani, number two, atalenga kile ambacho umesikia. And this is where I will bring in this teaching. That anytime you receive a certain teaching in church, Mda mrefu huwa ipiti, huwa inajaribiwa, hilo nene. I had a testimony of a certain pastor, this is many years back. During a particular service, it was preached regarding forgiveness. And the Holy Spirit quickened him, haka kumbuka kuna jamaa mbae, amekua kimbeba kwa roho for many years. And now the interesting thing, the, the part of this story is, it is long since they met him. So ni mtu, for instance, walisoma na high school or something of that sort. So it is many years past. Hata pengine wakati huwa kuwa meokoka, lakini saia meokoka. Na ni mtu ngaji. Now this is where it got interesting. Alipoenda kwa public means of transport, alipopanda basi, he saw him. Alimwona ndio yule. <laughs> After many years, they have never met. So he, he, he can even maybe even forgot about him. Lakini aliposikia lile neno likiubiriwa, haka kumuka. This is very relevant pertaining to a certain brother. So he met him. The rest is history. He actually went and they talked. They were able to reconcile. Now, when I put that, I see the bit of a buzzword. But sometimes you can vividly remember. Especially ladies, they can even keep the dates, the specifics. So that is the temptation and the tribulation that actually comes. And is re and comes to attack the word, so you'll be preached regarding tithing, and then you say from today I will be a faithful tither, and then you come across significant money. You know, when it comes to tithe a thousand shillings, it might not quite be too much. Like you watch a good you are like my goodness. I don't know tithe that I feel that's too much. Then you know that the word is being attacked. And when you fail that mitiani, the word will be taken away from you, the seed. 18. And those, so rocky ground is the field number two. I want you to note here, Kwamba, it is escalating. It is escalating. So that's why I've told you it is very important for you to capture this portion of scripture according to how it follows. I mentioned this, listen, the parable of the sower, if I'm not very mistaken, is mentioned in three of the four Gospels. Also, if I'm not very mistaken, I don't know whether there are two or, or two or four. Like uh, uh, which one is this one? The temptation of Jesus is recorded in three or four. Three or four. No, the, the interesting thing is this: there are two temptations which are mixed. It's not the same in all gospels. So the Bible says the first temptation in all gospels that it is recorded is the same. So the Bible says, the devil challenged him, if you are the son of God, change this stone into bread. But the other two, in these different Gospels, they intertwine. It's not quite fixed. But in this one, in all areas where the parable of the Soa is mentioned, it remains the same. So you need to capture it the way it is. So in the temptations, they, there is a Gospel that will say that he was taken up on, um, uh, to the pinnacle of the temple and he was told for yourself. 
the other one that will be the last one, the other one that will be the second one, etc. etc. So I want you to capture your combat. This one, number one, you need to capture it the way it is. Number two, it is an escalation. Number one, the devil comes for the seed which you do not understand. Number two, you will come for the word which you have not you have understood, but it will be attacked directly and because it has no roots. Number three, verses 18, and others are the ones sown among thorns. thorns. They are those who hear the word. Oh no. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word. So choking, choking is making you to cause bread, to lack bread slowly. It's not, you're not being, you're not being, you're, you're, your neck is not being snapped. So you're being choked. With a potesa hewa pole pole. And the ones sown among the thorns, they are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the world, and it proves unfruitful. So this one is targeting the fruitfulness of the seed. So the reason as to why God sowed seeds in you is so that you can bear much fruit, John 15. So the Father takes pride, takes glory, is glorified when you bear not only fruit, but much fruit. Why? The fourth category of seeds fell on fertile ground where it was able to produce 30, 60, and 100 fold. So that is where the farmer intended for the seed to reach, to attain. He never rebuked the one that produced 30 or 60. He never encouraged uh, over the expense of the one which produced less. Lakini kile ambacho kwa nasema ni kwamba za. So the third category is attacking your fruitfulness. And what is this that is attacking your fruitfulness? The cares of the world. I would like to mention here and put, put, it, put it across ya kwamba. The things that are being mentioned here are vivid examples of what attacks God's word in us. If. There is no mystery behind it. It's plain. Okay, to go to if you love you meditate upon a particular item, a particular item, you will come to understand and discover Yakwamba. It, it will come to understanding Yakwamba. It is actually true. So here ni the cares of the world. Let's do Matthew 6. As I conclude. Matthew 6, 25, the Bible says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. What you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. So here Jesus is teaching and I said, do not be anxious, do not be stressed about these two things. Number one, your body, what you will put on, and number two, what you will eat. Remember, there is a portion of scripture uh, my mentor was preaching on last, I believe it was last week. Uh, uh, the spirit, uh, the, the, I think it was the, of just, uh, what was this? Uh, I forgot. It. I think it's the spirit of intercession. And he was mentioning about watchmen. Uh, they have become like dead dogs. They never, they don't bark. They love, they are glad on us, our sheep, na wanapenda kulala. So these are two attacks which attack intercessors. You cannot be an effective intercessor on a full stomach. You cannot be an inter in effective intercessor if you love sleep. So number two, so these two things. So number one, the cares of the world says what you will eat and what you will put on. These are things that actually concern people. 26. Look at the birds of the air. <coughs> They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into parts, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Uh -huh. Are you not of more value than they? Ndege wangani. Maniko nebabia kwamba, 
you might think they're irrelevant. Luckily, any time one is hit with a stone and it dies, God knows. <laughs> so he says, how are they going to be able to get out of the way? How are they going to be able to get out of the way? How are they going Lakini na uta waisikia zikisema, my goodness, I am so hungry and there is no food around. So God provides for them. So here is, anamaliza kwa kuuliza, are you of not greater value than the birds of the air? We are. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his lifespan? You can't. And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor speak. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed with one of, like one of these. And as Solomon, the Bible says, was the wisest king. He had great wealth. Hakuva nyingi kuliko the lilies. Praise be to God. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So, these cares of the world is a, as a result of lack of faith, because you want to take things into your own hands. You don't want to put it in the cares. You don't want, to, you don't want God to be concerned and to take charge over them. Over them. <coughs> Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. So, wali about you are dunia, aka wao wanajali kuhusu kila macho watavala, kila macho watavalia. Lakini wewe, kwa sababu ni waufalme, upasu kuji shugulisha, upasu kukua na stress regarding the things that also the Gentiles have concern over. For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. So mungu anajua. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, alone, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So these are the cares of the world. So the third category, what is attacking it, I would like to repeat, is... The cares of the world have tried to show you what the cares of the world entail. It's not all, but this is just an example of what it entails. Number two, the Bible says deceitfulness of riches. It is a it is a real issue. It is a real issue. Number three. And the desires for other things. The desires for other things. So in the, 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 the state of not being content. So kuna kitu ambacho umepata lakini you are still craving for more which is ungodly. Cares of the world, deceitfulness of riches, the desire for other things. Hence my topic. <laughs> Deceitfulness of riches. Don't miss. Don't miss. I'll be taking you through what is it that is deceptive about riches. Stay tuned. This will bless your life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Shalom. Until next time. Bye-bye.